Okay. Okay. So uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Egyptian Society of Subsea Engineers. Uh, today we're hosting uh, our two guest speakers, uh, Mr. Ted Mercer and uh, Mr. Philip Thoroy. And uh, today, hopefully, they're going to uh, help us learn more about uh, one subsea configurable subsea production systems. Uh, I'm interested myself to learn about this. Uh, my first time to hear about the concept of uh, configurable systems. So I hope uh, we all learn something new today and they have a good time with us also. Uh, thank you both of you for your time and uh, we're looking forward to hear what you have to say all right well thank you Omar. thank you for the opportunity to be able to present to your organization uh appreciate you and muhammad for reaching out to us uh and setting this up and your patience for working with us to make sure to get us on the calendar uh good evening and good morning everybody in the states uh, and good evening to everybody in, in, in egypt uh my name is ted mercer i'm a product champion for manifold and connection systems I'm joined uh, by my colleague, Philip Terrio, uh, who is the Once Up Sea uh, Wellheads, uh, CCUS, and Trees uh, product champions as well. So Once Up Sea Configurable Subsea Production Systems, what is that? Uh, we're gonna go in detail of what it is. We're really gonna focus on two technologies. We're gonna focus on our configured order manifold platform and our vertical manifold tree platform. Uh, and at the end of the day, we have questions. And uh, Phil, please feel free to uh, jump in at any time to ask any questions, and then at the end of the presentation, our contact information will be on there uh, if you want to reach out to us uh, after you listen to the recording. So throughout the product lifecycle field uh, development and to abandonment, our ability to quickly evaluate solutions, configure our product platforms, and offer life of field solutions enables the agile SPS to deliver the responsive functionality and certainty the subsea uh, operators require to ultimately strengthen the business case and optimize the economic viability in the basins. So where are our, what is our challenges on developing and on continuing to develop engineer to order solutions instead of configurable solutions? One, our schedule. Our schedule certainty will be removed uh, and we continue to have reduced schedule and, uh, and, and increased uh, delivery times. We want to be able to also bring forward our RI, excuse me, bring forward our rate of investment uh, for production online sooner. Doing the engineer to our solutions uh, makes that very complicated because you're engineering on the fly, constantly making changes, and you're not managing to the contract day one. You're constantly making changes and having variation orders, okay? Configurability. That's why Philip, me and Philip has worked very closely with the industry to understand what options does a supplier need on a consistent basis to be able to bring, bring forward first oil or first gas. Sustainability. Okay, we want to be able to reduce emissions and, and also minimizing our uh, environmental impact, meaning reducing installation times, reducing uh, welding, reducing uh, just carbon footprint in general. Also, we want to be adaptable. We want to be able to be adaptable uh, to our clients on a very timely basis. Uh, these days, we work very closely with certain operators where we may get an order out the blue that was not on our forecast, but since we have a standard and configurable solutions, we're able to develop and deliver the projects probably a year earlier because the engineering is already 100% complete and we can kick off manufacturing day one. So let's go into a deeper dive into why the value creation and opportunities that we have going forward. So what you see here, on the tree scope, you see a bunch of trees, they all look very different. They look like they're, provided, they look like they're designed by different, op, different uh, service companies, but they're not. They're all designed by one sub C with our engineering to order, background and custom solutions. Same with manifolds. They're all painted different colors, different connection systems, uh, horizontal and vertical connection systems, multi-board systems, and they all look very different. But how do you continue to keep up with the time while constantly engineering these manifolds and trees going forward? How can you be, deliver value on a consistent basis with high margins, right? So to address this, we decided to transition away from ETO solutions to, for, which is very project position, excuse me, very project specific solutions to a different type of portfolio. So for example, if you look at this tree here, Philip's gonna go into more details of how this same tree here with multiple variants can be used over and over again, but look consistent in the same, using the same components, okay? Same with manifolds, right? What we've done is we've taken the same approach that we do on trees with manifolds and be able to make it repeatable which also increases reliability in the manufacturing process, also brings value with our supply chain process and also reduces our engineering hours, okay? So that's how we've evolved our 
engineering to order solutions to configurable SPS solutions. So when it comes to evolution, okay, like we said earlier, our vertical motherboard tree platform, right? We have multiple variants. We can be able to accommodate a vertical connection system or horizontal connection system. We can have a meter, uh, we can have a meter into a tree, or we can have an RPM. Multiple variations, but still in the same platform. And Phillips will go into more details about that. When it comes to our manifold platform, we're able to accommodate anything from a four slot to a six to an eight slot manifold. Same building blocks, repeatable, multiple frame configurations, also able to uh, incorporate header valve distribution and also uh, electric actuators as well. So what we've done is we took the best of the best of what we needed, talked to our clients and to build and build a platform that brings value day one instead of starting from the jump and take a year from engineering uh, to kick in before we even start placing the raw material. I now hand over to Philip, who will go into our configured order, port configured order portfolio, and then I will close it out at the end. Philip? Yeah, thanks, Ted. Um, so look, guys, uh, well, essentially the, the slide in front of you, what it helps to showcase is um, outside of just the SPS hardware, um, how, how we bookended our configure to order solutions, our configure to order hardware by leveraging uh, digital solutions upstream and downstream of when we would typically deliver the equipment, which is in the execution phase. And to bookend this, we have subsea planner on the front end. Um, so Subsea Planner is our Subsea Field Development Software. We use this to engage with clients at a very early stage so we can digitalize um, the, the individual elements that we, that we use to build Subsea infrastructure. And then we're able to bring this and complement this, um, this uh, agile way in this early engagement methodology. We're able to bring this into the tendering phase and the execution phase leveraging our engineer to our, our configure to order equipment, right? So our configurable vertical monoboard tree platform um, and our CTO manifold platform. And like Ted said, we have some very illustrative examples following in the following slides, which help to show the strategy that goes into that packaging methodology um, and exactly how impactful that is in real time. And then finally, we book in this at the very end with our Subsea Live digital offering. Subsea Live is a digital offering that we use to monitor our equipment to service and, and understand the health of it over the life of the field. And with this constant stream of data, we learn about our equipment and then we could then bring this in back in the early phase through the knowledge that we've learned through our, field, our equipment's actual performance, right? Um, so what this shows, it's a, it's, a linear, it's a linear path from field development planning into execution and configure to order solutions and then into subsea live and life of field. Uh, it's, it's shown linearly here, but it's actually a very circular um, system in, 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 in terms of how we develop it or in terms of how, how we approach it. I also want to highlight on the top right hand side, we talk about services and tooling, right? Um, so another place where we've differentiated ourselves and we've sought to add a lot of value is not just in the hardware that we deliver, but the services and tooling that we use to deliver and install that hardware. Uh, because it doesn't help if we're agile in the equipment that, that we deliver, if we're not also agile, flexible, and configurable in the equipment that we use to install it, right? We'll talk about that more in the coming slides. So if you want to go to the next slide, Ted. Um, the philosophy of our configure to order systems, our configure to order trees, and our configure to order man manifold, um, it's one about efficiency through consistency in design and packaging. And the way we do this is we drive consistency in the product architecture throughout the varying levels in design and engineering and technical complexity. We're not going to get away from uh, project specific needs, basin specific needs. Clients are always going to have their preferences for whatever reason. Um, and a lot of them are very much warranted. Uh, so we have to figure out how are we going to enable ourselves to allow standardization to coexist with a certain level of customization. Now, you can't customize everything and have a standard system, but what we've done is we've sought to creatively package our systems in a, such a way uh, that we can scale it up or down to allow that level of customization while also leveraging our standard equipment. The way we've done this is we've, we've sorted our systems 
and we remove the traditional interdependencies that we might have between traditional subcomponents within a within a kit. So using a tree as an example, you can kind of list out the functions of a tree, right? A tree will house a production flow path. A tree will, will house a means to connect the tree to a manifold or a plet or an inline T or something else via a well jumper. The tree will house a control system. The tree is used for ROV access intervention and the tree is used for, for valve actuation and pressure containment. Now, historically, if I would have made a change of the type of jumper, going from a, a horizontal well jump, jumper to a vertical well jumper, this may have impacted um, the production flow path and where the choke is placed. And then once I move the choke around, now this impacts where the controls pod is packaged. And that might impact where I have valve actuators. And before you know it, one small change to one of these functional modules now has a humongous impact on the tree. And this is why I will have ended up with a different tree for every project before in an engineer to order world. We've, we've eliminated that, right? We've removed those traditional interdependencies so that we can make a change to one functional module without making a change to the other. And what this allows is it allows us to leverage standardization. It allows us to, to leverage value engineering efforts. It allows us to leverage uh, uh, economies of scale and really drive value in our equipment. And then finally, what we've done is uh, with regards to the trees, we've been flexible in uh, installation and drill center flexibility. So we can take the same tree and install it uh, directly onto a wellhead, or we can use an intermediate tube and spool, right? Full modularity, uh, full, full configurability, again, whilst allowing and enabling standardization to, have, to live within that space. So if you wanna to go to the next slide. So these next handful of slides, what they do is they, they physically illustrate the philosophy that we talked about on the front end using our vertical monoboard tree platform as a, as a, a discussion case. Uh, so let's talk about that, that well jumper module first. What you see here is a vertical tree on a tubing head spool with a simple choke flow and a vertical well jumper. To configure this from a vertical well jumper to a horizontal well jumper, if you want to click one slide, Ted, it's a matter of removing that, that vertical jumper, repackaging the horizontal jumper in the rear uh, annular side quadrant of the tree. And what you can see is that we've converted from a vertical well jumper tree to a horizontal well jumper tree with zero impact to the remainder of the product architecture. Very impactful, right? Now, if you want to go one slide over, Ted, so let's talk about the wellhead interface module. So again, we have this tree landed on top of a tubing head spool. Let's say that we want to land this on top directly in, onto the wellhead to remove the capex associated with the tubing head spool. Um, if you want to click one more slide, Ted, essentially what you do is you remove the tubing head spool, click one more slide, and you land the tree directly onto the wellhead and click one more slide. We have a couple of key technologies that we use to enable this. One of them is the Thade tubing hanger annulus isolation device. And what this does is it moves annulus pressure containment directly into the tubing hanger. This is key technology that we've developed. Um, we have it for 10K, 10K pressures and 15K pressures. And we're actually the only uh, qualified solution on the market for 15K tubing hanger and wellhead systems. Um, also tubing hanger and wellhead systems, they're very beneficial. But historically, they would have been very capex intensive because it would have been dependent on rig interfaces and project specific tooling. We've developed a proprietary uh, tool and tubing hanger installation orient orientation system called the Thoughts Tubing Hanger Orientation Spool, which removes these interdependencies and offers the industry's first and only rental enabled means of tubing hanger installation alignment. Uh, something that we're very excited about. We piloted it and we have successful field trials. Um, and we continue to be delivering this for, for major, major oil and gas uh, customers today. So one, thing to I yeah, yeah. one thing I want to add, I want to skip one thing to add is everything that we're presenting here, guys, this is a uh, novel technology that has been sold, right? So this is, this is like Philip just said, this stuff has been tested actually, not just actually in the test lab, but also in real life uh, uh, installation. So there's tier six or seven uh, as a minimum uh, as far as the technology and rating this level. Mm -hmm. So this technology has been installed being installed in manufacturing right now for the uh, customer base. Yeah, for sure. That's a key point, man. Um, so that was on, on the, um, the wellhead interface. 
So now let's talk about what's probably the most um, interactive and the most illustrative example of configurability in our kit is the flow path configurability in the vertical monoboard tree platform. Um, so we have three primary ranges, three, three primary configurations uh, for our, our well jumper. Those include a simple choke flow system like you have shown here, a system with a, a metered injector, right, with an integral meter, and then a, a metered producer system, a, a production tree with a meter, a, a, an integral meter. So what you have here is a metered injector. Uh, the way the production flow path typically flows, it goes from the bottom of the tree, the tubing at spool, up into the massive valve block, out to the left into the production wing block. You then hit your production choke, that little arm pe orange piece on the uh, left-hand side, and then down into the, um, the production flow path, and then out into the well jumper. To upgrade this to an injection system, it's a matter of repackaging that production flow path within that rear production side quadrant of the tree. So Ted already clicked the button and what you have here is the metered injector. And again, all you've done is reroute the production flow path within that production side quadrant. But if you isolated the uh, production flow path from the rest of the tree, the valve actuators, the massive valve block, the well jumper, the SCM placement, you will have noticed that it all stays in exactly the same place. And then to convert this from a metered injector to a metered producer, you want to click the button one time, Ted. Again, notice that the remainder of the tree didn't change. Um, the only repackaging happened local to the uh, production flow path, right? And the only reason that you're changing is you're changing the placement of the meter with respect to the choke for, so that you can get optimal placement. Again, the, the overwhelming majority of the, the packaging stays exactly the same. And then finally, one thing that will have changed that would, would have been a real challenge is how do we incorporate uh, when a client needs a fully retrievable flow path that has an RPM or a flow control module? Well, what we've done is, again, we've packaged the RPM into the exact same footprint and quadrant as the production flow path here today. So if you want to click the slide one more, Ted. Um, this shows a system with an RPM. We've interfaced the RPM directly into the production wing block so as to minimize the amount of, um, of connections in the system. Um, and also we've, we've wholly protected the remainder of the product architecture on the rest of the tree. Um, so again, what we've done in a, in a very short span of time is we've gone from very simple functionality tree, very simple choke flow, and then we've upgraded that all the way to the, that the technical complexity necessitated uh, by a, a, a retrievable flow path, a fully retrievable uh, flow module. These are, these are wildly different ranges of technical complexity, um, but we've, we've, we've integrated into the tree in such a way that it's scalable, right? And what I mean by scalable is that you're not paying a premium on the top end, um, to have that option on the lower end, right? These are, these are options within uh, a system. So if you want to go to the next slide, Ted, the next slide highlights uh, tooling and how, how we've been integrated uh, configurability and functionality into our suspension tooling suite used to install and orient our tubing hangers. Um, again, Everyone's always focused on the hardware. They're, they're focused on what's being installed sub C permanently. Um, but what's not really focused on in the industry are the tools which would we use to install and orient that system. So what we have here is a tubing hanger running tool, a section view. If you want to click the slide, what we've done is we've standardized on the upper and lower interfaces of the system in such a way that the button body of the tubing running tool is, uh, it's designed up to 10K, 15K rather, and it can handle up to seven inch systems, uh, but the stabs are configurable to suit the application. So we could swap out stabs for a five inch 10K, five inch 15K, seven inch 10K, what have you. The body of the tool remains the same. And the overwhelming majority of the cost of the tool is in the body, right? So it makes perfect sense. <coughs> Excuse me. We're also in a unique position within one sub C and that we own all of the interfaces associated uh, with uh, downhole lines. So our hydraulic couplers, our electrical feed through system for both single, single line and dual contact single penetration, right? So two lines through a single electrical connector. 
and multi-fiber connection systems. We own those all, all under the Schlumberger umbrella. So five years ago, four years ago, when we set out on this configured to order journey, what we said was any new technology that we develop will use the exact same prep for any one of those functions. And in doing so, what we can do is we can interchange those functions within our, the, the tools on our standard fleet. Why this is impactful is if you're in a conversation today with one of our competitors, they'll talk in terms of blank plus blank when it comes to tooling functionality. So what this means is they'll say, I have a six plus two system. And what this means is six hydraulic lines plus two electrical lines, right? And it, any tools have to, have to be configured within that, um, those limits. Otherwise you'll have to uh, purchase a, a new tooling suite, de develop a brand new tooling suite. We don't have this. We have 13 downhole lines available to us, uh, which is the most available in the industry. And they can be configured to suit the application. So if you want 13 hydraulic lines, knock yourself out. If you want 13 electrical lines, that's cool too. If you want 13 fiber optic lines, I don't know why you would do that, but we can do it, right? Um, obviously, you're going to need some combination of them. Where this, is, where this is convenient is we know we're moving into a more sustainable environment um, not just as an industry, but as a society. Uh, and we know that we're going to see more demand for all electric completions and all electric subsea production systems in the, in the near future. Our tools are already ready for this transition. We can take the tools that we have in our rental fleet today that are used for conventional oil and gas application. Um, we can reduce the amount of hydraulic lines packaged into them and increase the number of electrical lines packaged into them um, and increase fiber optic lines <laughs> on in situ deal uh, for that. So look, we've got availability because these tools are used across uh, the app uh, across applications. We've got inherent sparing philosophies because we can pull the tools off our rental fleet and use them for any project uh, that we have in our portfolio right now. They're forwards and backwards capable um, from the day that they will have been put into service. They're prep already uh, prepared for the all electric systems transition. And then rental model is our base case here, both for tube and hanger and wellhead and for tube and hanger and tube and head spool. So when you combine all these, there's obviously a significant CapEx and a significant OpEx reduction uh, just through the use of these, these standard systems. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, Ted, um, this next slide kind of helps to, I think you might need to press the button one more time. This next slide helps to, there you go. Just summarize everything that we have configured to order in the portfolio. Obviously, we've talked a lot about the tree on the top left-hand side and the tooling on the bottom left-hand side. Ted also hit on manifolds a little bit. And what we're doing here is we're essentially going through a full manifold build using our configured to order manifold, um, our configured to order manifold software. Yeah. What we're doing is we're just going through a series of selection, select, selection matrices. Um, to highlight the key, the key aspects, the key points within a manifold build, right. and then it delivers a manifold at the back end. This will yeah, have, I, I, go ahead, Ted. And also, I guess from a tendery standpoint, guys, this configurator that we have, it produces a bill of material. So when it comes to quoting, it's tied to suppliers, it's tied to quotes. So we can actually be able to produce a bill of material uh, from this configurator, you know, where we're going to get our costs. Uh, at, a, at a scheduled certain high level of certainty, uh, scheduled certainty going forward. So this is a tool that we have uh, within the manifold platform that allows us to build manifolds from a four slot to an eight slot uh, with multiple configurations with, with the CINVs uh, and also distribution as well. So we're not just talking this digital world, we're actually living in the digital world when it comes to being able to produce bit of materials and routings uh, for our manufacturing facilities. Yeah. And, you know, Ted, he hit on it earlier. Um, one of the things to talk about on this slide is return on investment, right? This, this stuff is great, but it doesn't help you if you're not using it. These are systems that we're using to tender projects today. In fact, on the vertical monoboard tree side, 100% um, of vertical monoboard tree opportunities leverage our configured to order vertical monoboard tree platform as a base case for tenders and um, and uh, client engagement. And then further on the bottom left-hand side, again, 100% of vertical monoboard tree uh, projects leverage our configured to order tooling suite, um, which again, enables us to leverage full benefits of this platform 
and enables us to make sure we're taking full advantage of ongoing standardization efforts, both within one subsea and, and through the industry as, as a whole. <clears throat> you wanna go to the next slide? Yeah. So look, um, Ted highlighted the challenges we have uh, as, as an oil and gas um, market today, right? And it, they're tied to schedule, return on investment, configurability, adaptability, and sustainability. And if you stack up engineer to order approaches, engineer to order systems, and weigh the pros and cons of engineer to order with any one of these five uh, drivers, what you'd, what you'd find is that engineer to order just doesn't, it doesn't fit the bill. Through configure to order systems, we're able to reliably deliver with more, more budget and cost certainty to a schedule because we know what we're delivering. We've delivered it already. We've standardized on it and we do it. We can do it repeatedly. With regards to return on investment, we're able to bring ROI forward and reduce total cost of ownership by expediting our delivery using that equipment. In terms of configurability, I think these CTO platforms really speak to themselves and we're able to dynamically adapt to different field conditions, um, client needs, basin needs very easily because we've packaged a wide range of technical complexity into very discrete options on our product platforms, right? Um, we've allowed standardization to coexist with, with customization and configurability, which is very important. We're not trying to shove a static solution down a client's no, throat when it yeah. may or may not fit the bill. Adaptability and configurability are very, very interrelated. I'd say configurability is more configurability, configurability around our hardware. Adaptability, we're able to reallocate equipment quickly across the globe because now these standard systems and these standard cores, they drive the ability to develop stocking programs. And this hardware can be repurposed for different equipment through that engineering uh, consistency. And then finally, sustainability. Look, at the end of the day, the less hardware that we have to maintain, um, the more efficient we are in our operations, the more efficient we are in what we do, both as one sub C and as an industry, will drive down emissions by driving down waste, at, right? Um, so that's all I have. I'm not sure if you have anything to add to that, Ted. No, you, you know, uh, I mean, I think at the end of the day, guys, you know, uh, our goal is to bring value to you on a day to day basis, uh, as fast as possible, right? We want to be able to, uh, be agile. And when we do, uh, be able to be consistent in what we do and, uh, and deliver on our promises on a schedule certainty and, uh, and a quality, high, reliable product. So, uh, just to close out, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask us now or uh, on the recording. Uh, if you have anything around trees, well here at CCUS, Philip Terrier is your guy. If you have anything around manifolds and connection systems, I'm your guy. Uh, but also, when it comes to CCTO and standardization, we have other product lines that has went down this route as well. We have connection systems that has been a very standardized product line uh, with us and also controls as well. So pretty much our whole, uh, mostly of our SPS portfolio uh, has been standardized and configured uh, to order uh, so we can deliver a, uh, a system to you in, uh, in less than 24 months. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, yes, I do have a question myself, uh, Ted and Philip. Uh, as, you, as you explained your, your concept of uh, coexistence between standardization and customization, does, the, does this mean that you, you're having on-shelf uh, trees that are already uh, half-made, let's say, without the configurable parts that are on, on stock? So uh, when a client shows up with a, with a request, you can just cut down the delivery time? Or how, how do you manage the, the manufacturing process on your end, if you can answer that? Yeah, I, I can take that, Ted. Um, so we have two sides to this, right? Um, we have our fast-track program, uh, with which we, we use to deliver our, our horizontal systems. And there we do have a, a, traditional, a traditional stocking program where we place demand on, on a tree in kit form. And then as this kit goes through the manufacturing life cycle, a client has the opportunity to pick it off of the, um, off of the manufacturing assembly line, basically. Um, and then based on where it is in delivery, customize it to suit their needs. On the horizontal tree platform, what we have is we've worked with our vendors 
uh, for consignment stocking management um, so that we have a bit more flexibility in the changes that we can make. But in both of these, we do exactly what you said before. Um, we, we minimize the amount of upfront effort and the amount of procurement so that we can open ourselves to as much configurability as is reasonable within the bounds of the platform. Um, so as reasonable within the bounds of the platform uh, while uh, allowing for uh, that, that certain amount of configurability, right? So usually what's the delivery time for this uh, solution compared to the traditional ones? So for, for a traditional tree, you, you're looking, if you look at engineer to order, um, anywhere between, you know, 24 to 36 months uh, or more would have been realistic. Um, we strive on our fast track platform to be able to deliver trees in nine to 12 months. Um, and typically you're looking at about an 18 month delivery, again, depending on the level of standardization, um, the level of stocking that we have available to us and the, uh, the manufacturing environment that we have at that moment in time. So, and also with Manfolds as well, you know, our traditional delivery uh, from ETO solution, you're probably looking anywhere from 24 to 36 months since like Philip said from a tree, but this CTO uh, we're 18 months or less. Uh, our target is around uh, 12 to 14 months that we're working uh, to right now. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. It's clear now for me. Uh, maybe our audience, maybe if they have questions, they can either uh, try to speak up or write in the chat box. A bunch of Ted Mercers. Oh, yeah, maybe they know the info. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised Ted Mercer doesn't have a question. Yeah, <laughs> which one of them? <laughs> so uh, let me ask another question then. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how many clients have used th this configurable trees and manifolds already? Or is it a new approach you have? I can start with man man manifolds. Uh, I can say uh, so far we sold... Uh, the ones that we have sold have uh, been to BP. Uh, also, we sold some to Woodside as well. Uh, the ones to BP have been uh, electric, uh, four slot manifolds. Uh, but every, well, how we design the CTO manifold is that every manifold that we design will use components of the CTO platform, whether it's fittings, uh, connection system standardization, uh, frame standardization. So we have some manifolds that may be 100% configurable, right? But we have some that may have, say, 50% configurable. And there may be a little customization in there due to maybe the large header sizes of uh, some of these large gas manifolds that we see in, in specific regions. So I, I would say is that from a CTO standpoint, we probably, I say at least 50 to 60 percent of the manifolds we sell today are, are, are configured to order uh, with the goal of being able to achieve 75 percent in the next few years. So we've delivered a few. Uh, we have a lot in manufacturing right now and uh, we're, we're uh, kicking forward. Philip. Just that point from VXMP? Yeah, uh, so we booked our first uh, configurable tooling suite project in 2020. Uh, that's since been successfully delivered. And then we booked our first uh, configurable tree platform project in 2022. And that's that that delivery is is ongoing. Um, again, the, it, it our CTO tree platform, the configurable vertical monoboard tree system. We, we, we um, that serves as the basis for Somebody all of our there. vertical monoboard tree bids now and moving forward. So as as we, we expect a, a significant increase in uh, in that install base here in the next couple of years. Yeah, that's that's very good. Thank you very much for the uh, clarification. Very much. Uh, I, I believe we don't have uh, more questions, do we? Last call for questions. I uh, uh, it's uh, Mohammed Higazi here, and not so much of a maybe question, but a thought. I think where the value also of the configurable to order um, comes through is on uh, integrated EPCI projects, like within our alliance. Mm. We've, we've seen a lot of value. So, Philip, maybe you can touch on that personally. Working on integrated projects, it uh, it helps de-risk the SPS deliveries to serve. So it's a key enabler, in my opinion. Maybe you want to touch on that? Yeah, I, look, I completely agree. Um, and I think, I think that that story, the benefits of that story start earlier, right? I think they start at what we've done with Subsea Planner, 
Yeah. And Sepsi things. Planner really allows for early collaboration, not just in the SPS architecture, not just at, mm -hmm. a, at a drill center level, um, but on a on a project level and in, in a in a engineering and construction a, a surf level as well, right? And really enables these integrated projects. All all we've done with with configure to order, you know, with configure to order, you have to predefine your options. You have to pre-design and you have to you have to know up ahead what systems and what levels of complexity you will allow within your systems. So I think we've just kind of continued the story on what what um, what projects and what software is like like Subsea Planner, what the idea of the Subsea Integration Alignment uh, Alliance is. I think we've continued that story and we've added additional value uh, through configurability and through through flexibility. Absolutely. And Muhammad, just to add to that, you know, I mean, I, uh, as we worked with BP in the past, you know, when we uh, on SIP and also on Mad Dog, you know, that same philosophy is used on the VPCI contracts when it comes to SIA, but also some of the Woodside and also some of the upcoming Chevron opportunities as well. Uh, this defined upfront uh, at the seed stage has uh, reduced a lot of risk and uh, increased a lot of schedule certainty and cost when it comes to our uh, attendant deliverables and also uh, just a, a confidence standpoint with our clients because a lot of these designs that we're seeing here, they wasn't, it's not something we did in isolation. Our client base has been heavily involved with us designing this and getting their feedback and knowing what we're bringing to the forefront uh, of the market. So uh, yes, it brings a lot of value. We could talk about that for days as far as how much value it brings, but you know, the idea of schedule certainty and cost certainty uh, from our standpoint, increased margin goes a long way with the configure to order platform. Thank you, guys. It'd be uh, maybe further down the line, we can uh, <clears throat> pull a session together on Subsea Planner for the community. That'd be appreciated. Absolutely. Uh, well, no, thank you. Ha thank you, Agassi, for the uh, next webinar you have already. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, uh, Ted and Philip. Uh, it was uh, quite informative and um, intense, I can say. Uh, hopefully we can uh, have these systems in Egypt and also for our audience everywhere uh, worldwide. Uh, I think it delivers a good value for uh, schedules. And uh, I think I think it will have its, uh, its share for the markets in the uh, coming years. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you join our community and also have another uh, sessions in the future. And also would like to thank our participants as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thanks.